Hello, hello, and welcome. Um, my name is Margaret. I'm uh, part of the Metabase Bros team. And um, today with me uh, is Bobby. Ilyev is, um, uh, he is a part of Materialize team. And Luis Paulini, he is the part of Metabase team. Today, we're going to be talking about uh, Metabase and Materialize connector. Uh, so, um, you know, without a lot of talking, uh, um, I invite you to join our chat. If you if you want to ask your questions or leave your comments, please feel free to do so. Uh, and uh, Luis, Bobby, I'm giving the word to you. All right. So again, without much talking, uh, I wanted to uh, share with you just a brief intro of what Metaverse is, and probably also show you um, some super super quick like demo. Um, so I'm gonna share my screen. Over there, you are seeing my screen. Cool, great. So, what Metaverse is? Uh, for the ones that know know what Metaverse is, it's the simplest way of you know uh, to make everyone in your company uh, pull data and, and and get data, right? And ask questions. Uh, so it's it's uh, uh, I love to call it it's a, the the real and true democratization of data inside your company or your team. Um, it's so easy that you, I mean, there's a demo there, there's a link in the presentation, but you will see me literally in under five minutes getting data out of our sample data. I'm gonna show you that in just one minute, uh, but you can go to, to uh, the link there and, and watch the demo. And it's as simple as, I mean, if you wanna run Metaverse right now, it's as simple as, you know, if you were familiar with Docker, it's just Docker run, you know, what the command you see there uh, in 30 seconds uh, at the most, you will have a, instance running on your machine and you can go to, you know, localhost 3000 and it's, it's there. Metaverse is there running. You can start connecting databases, upload, uploading CSVs, uh, playing with your data super, super quick. And if you're not familiar with containers, you can just run, you know, uh, that command over there, wget, you get a, a, a jar file and, um, and it's, you know, you run Java jar and you get Metaverse running. Uh, it's a it's a it's a Java application, so that means that it can run absolutely anywhere that Java runs. Uh, in fact, we have people running Metaverse on Raspberry Pis in you know in the middle of nowhere, and we have like massive public companies running Metaverse in clusters you know around the world for serving you know several thousand requests uh, per second, which is really um, really amazing. Um, if you don't want to run, you know, if you don't want to go through through all the burden of managing infrastructure, then we have a cloud and you can just go to our cloud, you know, meta, go to metaways.com and just click there. And uh, you'll have an instance, uh, you know, full, full fledged instance with all the bells and whistles, all the best practices. You, you can check which practices we have secu uh, about security, but all the best practices are already there. So just you know, click, boom, and you have a metaways instance running on our cloud. You know, we, we handle absolutely all the burden. Uh, having said this, you know, but what is it? I mean, what, I mean, probably you guys want to see it live, right? You want to see what Metaverse is. So let me, let me do that pretty quick. I'm going to uh, share the screen where I have Metaverse running and you'll see me, uh, using Metaverse effectively. Uh, this is a screen. I'm going to share it. I. Uh, this, uh, there we go, Ooh. right there. So this is Metabase. Yeah, once you, and yeah, that's it. Uh, a little bit better. Uh, this is Metabase as soon as you, as you launch it. I'm, I'm running it in on my machine. I'm going to authenticate. And I, whoops, it's because I, I uh, went to, uh, um, to another URL that doesn't exist. I, I just pulled the, the container, run it, and, and connected a Postgres SQL that I have with some, some sample data. And you can do some exploratory analysis, like you know, going to the tables and start drilling and slicing and dicing, you know, data. But you know, this is probably really simple if you want to do it by your own. Let's say you know, let's let's go to the real deal. I want to get a dashboard of all my orders, right? Boom, and there you go. Like Metabase created a dashboard for you with all the filters. You can start slicing, dicing your data, you know, doing some some interesting uh, drill down and drill through over here. So having, uh, having, you sh having shown you this, uh, I, again, wanted to, to, to pass the wall to Bobby 
Uh, so he can show what the, what the materials team have, have been doing, which is absolutely awesome. So Bobby, all yours. I'm going to like stop here. I'll leave nice. this all to you. Thank you. Uh, great. Uh, great introduction. Uh, I love it. Um, let me quickly also share my screen. So oh, yeah, there we go. Um, so my name is Bobby, Bobby Lear. Uh, I'm a DevX engineer here with uh, Materialize. I've been with Materialize for about two years now. And yeah, I'm the one who helped build the Metabase Materialize connector. For anyone who is not familiar with Materialize, Materialize is an operational data warehouse. It is purpose built for operational workloads where an uh, analytical data warehouse would be too slow and a streaming processor would be too complicated. Basically, materialized helps you act on what's happening right now. To put this into perspective, in the analytical work, uh, we are searching for insights uh, over vast quantities of data, like for the, in the past year or the past month. Uh, but on the other side, with operational work, we are looking to take immediate actions on things that are occurring right now uh, in real time. For example, things like customer notifications, or operational dashboards, uh, workflow automations, and uh, so on. This architecture here probably looks familiar to anyone who is in the uh, analytics field. Um, you have uh, sources on the left, like message brokers like Kafka, Red Panda, or databases like Postgres, or webhook sources from different SaaS applications. And we ingest data from all of those, we ingest the data uh, continuously and we store it in uh, what we call the storage layer. Uh, then we go up to the compute layer uh, where we continuously do transformations and we keep uh, the results fresh and uh, in memory. Um, after that, we have the SQL control plane, uh, which uh, lets you query um, those, uh, um, that data that you have in, the, uh, in your compute clusters. Um, we are Postgres Y compatible, so you can use your favorite Postgres tools uh, to, to connect to Materialize. Uh, and then you have the ability to query your data just as you would uh, any other Postgres database interactively. Or um, what you could do is also subscribe to a specific query, uh, which means that you get a constant stream of data as the data changes. Um, the big difference that really sets us apart in the industry is the in in incremental computation. Um, to put this you know, into perspective, when you query a traditional database, uh, for example, when you ask a question, that question spins up some compute activity. For example, it reads data from your tables, uh, it compiles the data, it filters the data, it joins it, and then at the end, it serves the results back to you. Um, and this happens every time you run a, a query. Uh, of course, there are some costs and time delays with that, no matter how efficient that database is. And on the other side, we have Materialize, uh, where we've ta taken a different approach and we build uh, an incremental uh, compute engine so that we do the computation as soon as new records come into the database uh, because you've predefined uh, the queries that you're going to run. That way, we can update the results as the information becomes available and therefore, uh, writes are actually where the uh, work happens and then reads are much faster as you um, have the freshest data uh, already available to you. Mm, to give you some use cases, uh, some common customer use cases are uh, real-time analytics like operational dashboards and uh, BI, uh, something that we will actually explore today using the new Metabase and materialized connector that we've built. Um, at our Use cases would be um, automation and notifications, like user-facing noti notifications and uh, fraud detection, um, something that you actually need the precious data uh, to, to act on. We also got segmentation and personalization, like dynamic pricing and uh, product recommendations and machine learning operations. Mm. Let's quickly discuss why we decided to develop the uh, materialized metabase. Uh, connector. Um, as I already mentioned, Materialize is Postgres Y compatible, uh, which basically means that you could just use the default Postgres uh, Metabase connector. Uh, that would work out of the box. And Materialize would work 
with the vast uh, Postgres Postgres Azure system. Um, but you know how sometimes things work together, but you know they could keep being done uh, better. That's how we felt with the Postgres uh, mater uh, connector uh, working together with Materialize. Um, it was working well, but we uh, saw some points for improvement, and we uh, just wanted to have a better uh, user experience when using Materialize uh, together with Metabase. Basically, we recognized that there are some areas for improvements in the Postgres connector. Uh, for example, we refined a few things, like we sped up the uh, initial database uh, schema synchronization. We made the connection settings a bit more straightforward, and we removed any of the unnecessary steps. Uh, so there would be like no confusion uh, on which driver you need to use and um, so on. Um, as I said, the end goal was basically to have a smoother user experience. Uh, of course, building something new is a, is a team effort. Uh, the meta-based team uh, was right there with us from day one. Uh, they helped us a lot. Uh, they gave us some great advices and their documentation was um, uh, really, really good. Um, they also did a security review of uh, our code um, just so that uh, we're sure that uh, the code uh, that we uh, contributed actually uh, meets their uh, the, the meta-based standards. Of course, we, we faced some challenges along the way, but uh, thanks to the Metabase team, uh, we got through them. So huge shout out to everybody who everybody from Metabase who help out, helped out with this. Um, this is probably um, one of the most important things, in my opinion, uh, because for reliability, we are running the entire Metabase test suite, which consists of um, more than 3,500 tests on a regular basis. Um, this systematic approach helps us confirm if the driver uh, is still compatible with any new materialized versions or metabase versions that come out. Because with materialized, we have weekly releases, so there are new versions and uh, maybe some breaking changes uh, every week. Those um, regular tests that we run, thanks to the metabase test suite, uh, so it, uh, lets us catch any bugs that might pop up. And of course, this is something that we just couldn't do uh, with the Postgres connector. And to summarize why this, this matters is now that we have the driver, you will have a faster, a more smoother and more efficient metabase and materialized experience, a more intuitive uh, setup process. We've removed any of the, the guesswork and you can be more confident knowing that we are running the entire metabase test suite on a regular basis so that we would um, catch any potential hiccups uh, along the way if if they are you're in and we've prepared a live demo today so hopefully it uh, runs through uh, smoothly but as i mentioned before operational dashboards will be uh, the use case that we will review today, thanks to the metabase and the new materialized connector. And the demo itself, it will be a simulated auction house website where we have different items for sale and uh, users placing bids for those items. Um, the data, it will be generated uh, continuously and we'll build a dashboard to keep track of the winning bids. For this, we're going to use the materialized Terraform provider, which we've built and actively maintained together with DBT, which would let us build our models with uh, just a single command. And yeah, then we will visualize all this uh, in Metabase and we will have a uh, live dashboard uh, based on that data. Before I jump into the demo, uh, is there anything that you'd like to, to add or ask? If you have any questions, feel free to leave them in the questions tab or in the chat. We are happy to answer them. Well, sounds good. <clears throat> then I'll just share my screen. One second. Okay, so I'll head over to Visual Studio Code where I've got the demo ready. 
Uh, this demo is actually available on GitHub, so everyone could clone the repo and uh, run run the demo uh, as well. Uh, let's give a quick overview of the of the demo. What we have here before we get started, you need a you need a materialize instance. Um, sorry about that. You need a materialize instance. You can sign up for a materialize account here. Actually, let me just share the demo link here in the chat before I go ahead. And then you need a running metabase instance uh, with the materialize and metabase connector. I've got a link to the to the connector in the in the readme file of the demo repo. You can either download the preview jar file from the releases uh, directory, or you could run uh, the materialized metabase image, which already comes with preview uh, with the driver preview uh, into it. Or if you have the metabase cloud, the, the new driver also uh, is available there as well. So um, there would be no need to install anything if you're using metabase cloud. Um, then you need DBT installed and Terraform. Terraform is optional because you, we are just going to uh, give you a quick example on how, how it all works, but it's not mandatory to, um, for you to also use it. As I mentioned, I got the Metabase container up and running. Um, so the next thing that I would do is uh, use Terraform to spin up a materialized compute cluster. I would do that with Terraform apply. Here we can see that we're going to create a new materialized cluster called Auction House. This is going to be com the compute cluster where we'll do um, uh, our uh, continuous transformations. With that Terraform, uh, connects to materialized and just creates that uh, resource for us. We also have a Visual Studio code, code extensions where our extension, which you can use to browse um, your uh, materialized objects and uh, run some queries. At the moment, we don't have any materialized views or, or views or any sources. So that's what we are going to use dbt for. Um, dbt would let us create our sources. Um, I have my dbt project here. Um, maybe for anybody who is not familiar with dbt, it's uh, the T in ETL basically lets you do your uh, transformations. I have my DBT project here, projects here, and I have some definitions of the um, objects that I'll be creating. For example, I'm creating a um, source in Materialize uh, that's a load generator source um, that would uh, act as our auction house demo. And then we also have our models where we've defined, like for example, the, the winning bits and some fraud detection activities and, and so on. So with that, let's actually do, uh, a, do a dbt run. And dbt has found six models and a few tests. And what it would do is connect to materialize and compile that, uh, those SQL statements that you have and create those uh, models in materialize. Okay, with that, now if we head back to the materialize Visual Studio Code, code, code extension, which we've also done and maintain, then here we should be able now to see the, the new views and the uh, materialized views that DBT just created for us. We can also run SQL queries uh, directly from Visual Studio Code, thanks to the um, Made a bit, uh, materialize, <laughs> materialize uh, Visual Studio Code, Visual Studio Code extension. And for example, if I do a quick count from the winning bits uh, materialized view, then we can see that the data is already changing. This means that uh, our DBT run was successful, and we already uh, have data flowing in. And actually, we can explore the data quickly through here before we jump to, to Metabase. 
So we have the the data for the winning bids, like the the ID, the, the buyer, the auction ID, the amount, and uh, the bid time, and also the item that the that the bidder uh, uh, actually managed to to win. With the database materialized adapter, it would work just as it would for any other um, database. So you can actually do um, dbt docs surf and that would um, surf, surf. And that would generate um, the, uh, your do the dbt documentation based on the, on the, on your dbt project. If we head back to our browser and yeah, just visit localhost 8080, then we have those uh, that nice um, documentation page that was generated uh, dynamically based on our project. We can actually view uh, this graph here uh, and see the dependencies. We have the auctions, the bids, then we have the winning bids view, and from there we have some other views and. We also have some test models, just uh, as an example. And with that, we can also explore our models um, and just see the, the schema and so on. Okay, now that we actually have data in Materialize flowing in as we checked with uh, Visual Studio Code uh, extension, we can, and we head to, to MetaBase and um, build some dashboards. I've already added Materialize as, as a database here, uh, just so that you don't have to watch me copy and paste it. But what you would do is, as usual, just head over to the, to the databases tab, then from the drop dropdown, uh, select Materialize. Uh, as long as you've installed it, uh, you've added the uh, jar file to the plugins directory. We have some documentation in the um, metabase driver on how, how to do that. Or as I mentioned, or as I already mentioned, if you're using metabase cloud, then that will not be needed because the driver would already be available. So once you select, then you can just specify your materialized host, um, your port database, cluster name, and yeah, just uh, standard, just a standard for uh, a Postgres database, for example, or any other database. I already have the database, the materialized demo database added here. So what we can do is actually browse some data and uh, build a dashboard. Um, so the winning bits would be the one that we will focus on today. And this is probably one of my favorite features um, that you've already seen, the X-ray is stable. Um, I think that it's um, amazing that you can just click a button and then have a uh, nice dashboard uh, built uh, out of the box for you based on the data and the schema uh, that you uh, that you have. So let's save that and create a dashboard. What we can do now is Usually with Postgres or any other databases, um, you can set this to refresh every one minute or five minutes. Um, but as Materialize always has the freshest data, um, it's fine to run uh, this as, as often as, as you wish, or just um, to do that, you can uh, add the uh, refresh plug at the end and then specify uh, how often you want the dashboard to refresh. In our case, we would just say one second. With that, now we have the, the dashboard ready. Uh, it will be refreshing every one second and we'll be able to see the new data um, coming and you can like, just do uh, your operational work uh, directly here. As you can see, I'm not refreshing the table. It just refreshes every second. And we can see that the graphs here uh, and the counter here, uh, it, it, it's updating uh, every every second. Um, it's reading data through, uh, from, from Materialize uh, using the, the, new, the new driver. And 
yeah, I think that's more or less it. Um, what I encourage everybody to do is to just uh, go to the demo, uh, clone it, and then uh, give it a try uh, yourself. So you can try and build more uh, exci exciting dashboards and to the adapter uh, in action. Awesome. Thank you for sharing that, Bobby. Um, really appreciate your work on the connector. And by the way, if anyone is interested to develop their connector too, we have a sp special program uh, for that. So, you know, feel free to uh, fill in the form. I uh, just sent um, a link to the chat, which is metabase.com slash contact. Uh, you can just pick the Metabase Partner Program. And if you are considering to develop your own driver, uh, just send us a message and you can get it from there.